Welcome everyone to Excel part six. Oh, there's a mistake, or <laughs> that would be Excel part five. Got a typo in the PowerPoint here. Um, my name is Ben Ropp. I'm a technology trainer here at the Advanced Learning Library at Wichita Public Library, being assisted by Ken Warner. And um, this is the fifth part of a five part series on Excel. Um, this is more formulas and functions. If you were here two weeks ago, you saw the formulas and functions class. In this class, we will review some of the uh, same uh, material with, with uh, different contexts to emphasize uh, some of that. Um, um, material. Um, uh, it's always good to see the same uh, material demonstrated in, with different examples. Um, so we'll do a little review on uh, what are the formulas and functions and the distinction there and um, and then we'll uh, look at some particular functions in uh, working with this um, auto inventory spreadsheet. Uh, if you were here last week on pivot tables, then you saw that uh, we worked with this same uh, spreadsheet with um, with uh, pivot tables. Um, so kind of doing a little backwards, this time we'll, we'll pull out some of the data in a more manual way, but it, it'll be a good way to show you what you can do with certain formulas. Uh, the pivot tables is, is the shortcut. So in this case, I showed you the shortcut first, um, but some of the uh, knowing how to work some of those functions, I think will be helpful. Um, so, um, so I've got a question about having more classes about pivot tables and um, I don't have a second class on pivot tables, uh, but the, uh, the class uh, from last week and um, uh, let me see yeah so if you go to the uh, youtube channel for wichita public library um, go to youtube and then uh, search wichita public library And um, then you can find our channel here and you can subscribe to it. You can look for the, uh, the library logo, this sort of star symbol with the sort of blue and green and turquoise colors. Um, and as you can see, the most recent classes down here, the most recent videos uploaded were the, from these classes and last week's class on Excel four here is, um, it was most recently uploaded just uh, uh, one day ago. So I'm going to go ahead and post this into the chat as well. Um, that's the library's YouTube channel. Many of our programs, not all of them, but many of them are available uh, to view in our YouTube channel there. So um, I always like to review this slide uh, with cursors to look out for. So when you're in Excel and you're just mousing around, you, get, you see that fat plus sign, that's the selection cursor. Um, and as you move up above the spreadsheet between the letters, between columns on that line between, you've got the resize cursor that's this one here. 
And um, if you're going to autofill some cells, uh, you see the small plus sign, you get the autofill cursor, that square in the corner is the autofill handle. We call it the handle. It's a little square in the corner of the active cell, the green square in the corner. And that lets you autofill. And then, of course, the move cursor is when you mouse over the edge of, an of the active cell, that would let you move that cell to another cell or the value of, or the move the value of the cell in the cell to another to another cell and we'll be doing a little bit of uh might be doing a little bit of autofill in this class or we will be in a minute so let's come back here so again with the basic formula we always start with an equal sign um so if i um and that's because the, the current cell is the X, is the unknown that you're trying to find out. And you're telling Excel to do a calculation for this cell. Say so this cell equals uh, then an equation, like a math problem, um, one plus two. But instead of one plus two, we're going to say the contents of A1 plus the contents of A2, for instance. Um, so and that is the way that we tell Excel to perform uh, mathematical calculations based on other cells in our spreadsheet. And um, then, so a function is a predefined formula. And so here's two examples. We have uh, A1 plus A2 plus A3 is going to add up the three values in uh, column in A1 and A2 and A3. And we see the result here of these, these numbers is 240. And then the function is kind of a, uh, well, so actually, no, this, these are both formulas, sorry. And um, the second formula here is calculates the average of these three cells, which would be A1 plus A2 plus A3, all in parentheses, divided by three. So the sum divided by three, and you see the answer is 80 here. Um, so we have functions, which is like a shortcut to a formula, a function that does each of these operations. And the function version of the sum, the sum function is uh, sum and then parentheses, the cells that we're going to um, add up. And um, in the average, so the typing out the or inserting the function for average is a, a, a shortcut to the formula that we spelled out in the previous example here for average. And um, of course, every function has the same structure here, which is the equal sign always starts with the equals and then we have the name of the function, which is traditionally done in all caps. You don't have to type it in all caps. It will still work, uh, but it's traditionally in all caps. And then you have parentheses and there's always parentheses. And occasionally there's no, nothing inside of the parentheses, but there can be one or more things in parentheses separated by commas. Um, so in the um, so the sum and average of A1, A2, and A3 looks the same except for the name of the except for the name of the function, which is either sum or average here. Um, 
because it's performing the calculation on the same range, what we call a range uh, or sequence of cells, um, an inclusive sequence from, so A1 to A3, A1 colon A3 means the range from A1 to A3. And in the, sum, in the case of some, we're adding them together. In the case of average, we're adding them and then dividing by the number of values that are there. So um, it's kind of a shorthand. So then here we have the formulas and functions side by side. The, the function for the sum is equivalent to A1 plus A2 plus A3, or the sum of A1 colon A3 is the equivalent of that. And the average of A1 colon A3 is the equivalent of parentheses, A1 plus A2 plus A3, close parentheses divided by three. Um, so these are simple mathematical equations in their function equivalents. Um, there are hundreds, maybe thousands of functions in Excel that are very powerful. And, um, but this gives you a good overview of what um, the way that functions look and what they can do. So here we go. Let's dive into our auto inventory um, spreadsheet. Um, let me, I'm gonna, jump away from our PowerPoint for the moment. And uh, I can make this a little bigger to help. Um, another thing that I'll just review briefly is if we want, you notice when I scroll down this page, I'm just using the roller button on my mouse. Um, you lose the header row. And it might be nice to keep that up there so we know this is a pretty simple spreadsheet, so it's easy um, to kind of see what the columns are, but not, it's not always the case. Uh, so again, to, to freeze the top row, we're gonna use the view tab on the ribbon. Um, and as a reminder, we do have the the ribbon is where all the commands are here along the top, and it's divided into tabs up here. And the home tab has most of the functions, or not functions, most of the commands that we use most frequently, uh, but there's other ones. So under the view tab, we have a freeze panes. And if we click that freeze panes button, um, you're gonna go to freeze top row. Now, before you click on this, you wanna make sure you're not, if you're scrolled down the page, it's gonna freeze the top row that you can see. So um, you wanna scroll, make sure you're scrolled all the way up to the top and then go to freeze panes and freeze top row. And now, as I scroll down, you can see that top row stay up there. Somebody had a question about downloading the material. Yes, I see that. Let me uh, post the class materials link again. Um, uh, yeah, I forgot to repost that for people joining uh, later. So there in the, in the chat is a link to the Google Drive materials. And let me... Oh... Uh, why is it asking me to sign in? That's not right. Okay, let me double check something here. Um, I thought I had it up on. Oh, okay. So there's a problem there. Let's let me sign back in here. And it shouldn't be asking for that. Okay, we will update that link one second here. 
And I want to share with a link. Okay, here we go. Now, here's the correct link. Okay, let's try that one now. Okay, that should work. Right, yeah, I'm not signed in. Okay, so I'll just bring that over here. So that should look like this. And the, um, the spreadsheet I'm using is called functions and formulas, auto inventory, it's just functions and formulas. You're gonna just click the download button there and it'll download. This is an Edge, Microsoft Edge. Um, in other browsers, it'll show up at the bottom, the, the download, and then you can uh, open that. Don't open it in on Google. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and enable live transcript. And I'm glad that we are able to do that. So um, if anyone has trouble getting that spreadsheet, I'm sorry about the class link was uh, incorrect at first, uh, but the correct one should be there and it should also be in the description of the YouTube video once this is uploaded. Um, so here we have a, uh, go back to the home tab. We have a list of vehicles with the headings, uh, column headers, brand, year, type, model, price, and date received. And I usually update these dates. We'll just pretend it's 2017. Let's go back in time. And um, so we're looking at this spreadsheet and we're saying, uh, let's say you're helping with, uh, you work at this car lot and your boss wants you to um, give you uh, some figures. What's the value of all of the uh, cars on the lot? So, um, we want to add up, in other words, we want to add up all the values in the price column. And the easy way to do that, if you remember from the formulas and functions, and actually also the Excel basics class, we can use our fan handy auto sum. It's the most common function in Excel. And so it has its own button on the home tab and it's right there has that funny capital E looking thing. That's the Greek letter epsilon, which is a symbol for sum in mathematics. So we're gonna just click in the cell below at the bottom of that price column and click auto sum and hit enter. And we have a result. Um, which is not formatted, but it is the total of those numbers. So if we want to format that, we can go up to um, the drop down in the number group on the ribbon and go down to currency. Actually, I believe we've used, it looks like we've used accounting for these other ones. So I'm gonna use accounting and immediately we get these hash marks, which happens when the, a number is too large to fit in the column. So I'm gonna go up here to the resize the column. Um, I could just click and drag, but if I double click, it'll automatically resize to fit that number. And I'm gonna do that. And there is my number. Now, um, we don't really need those extra decimal places in this case. So I'm gonna use the buttons up here in the number group 
right under that uh, format number format drop down menu, there's these uh, increase or decrease decimal buttons. I'm going to just decrease that decimal by two. Another way that I could do that, let's say if I'm going to undo that. Um, and let's undo, I'm going to use the undo button here, undo the formatting. And uh, well, let's, let's redo the resize. Um, let's uh, resize it. Oh, it made it even smaller. We'll make it bigger. And then um, I can also copy the format from one of these above numbers and paste it down there with the format painter up here on the ribbon in the clipboard group. So I'm going to click any of the number values in my in this column, click on the format painter, and then notice my cursor has an added uh, paintbrush. And then I'm just going to paint this cell by clicking on it. And that's automatically transferred the same formatting for these numbers to here. And if we were going to make this, uh, we might put the, the word total down here and we might add some bold formatting. So that stands out and we can see what we're dealing with. So this has been sort of some review of things that we've done previously in this series. Um, most relevant to today is the auto sum, one of the easiest uh, function to use. When we clicked that, it did guess that we're viewing um, the column above and everything in it. If there were any blanks, it, would, it wouldn't go past the blank. Um, um, but, um, oh, and uh, you know what? I've, I've named this range in this spreadsheet. I forgot that I had done that. So um, even easier than uh, selecting the range, I can just use the name that I put in, which is price. Um, so I can just hit enter and there's my sum. So Let's, uh, I'm going to delete this row and redo this because I want to make some room for if I add, um, add rows here. And um, so I'm going to come up to the top here and make a, a new, uh, make sort of a dashboard here starting in row H and we'll have we'll say uh, total inventory. Um, I'm going to edit it in the, in, in the formula bar, just because I can. Hit enter. Uh, resize this column with the double click on the resize cursor. And then I'll put my total inventory here in um, this. And so I'm going to use the auto sum again. I want it in this cell, so I click auto sum. But notice it doesn't select any cells because there's no numbers adjacent to this cell. So it says, OK, I don't know what you want to add together, so you're just going to have to tell me. And um, so I'm going to select this column and click enter. And I'm going to format this with the format painter from over here and then double click to resize it. And that's looking good. So now, um, Let's say my boss says, well, um, what's the average of this, uh, the average price of these vehicles? 
And so I can do another column here. Um, so this kind of um, work is made easier by um, uh, naming ranges. So um, what I've done previously is select the column that I want to work with, which here is the price. And then I'm gonna right click on it and then go down to define name. And um, the name is, is gonna be price. And then I click okay. Well, and the name already exists, so I have to, I have to do it. I'm gonna cancel that and um, let's see. Is there a, uh, no, format is not what I want. So let's see, under data, I think is where you have the, the names. Um, where's it under formulas? Oh, it's under formulas. Um, name manager, here we go. So here's the name manager. Um, it's under the formulas tab. There's a, a, a name manager. So you can see the price is, has been um, defined by this, this group of cells that's highlighted there. And I've also defined the type over here. So that's the, the type range. And, and then there's, um, what is this one? Type DV. I'm not sure what that is. I'm gonna just ignore it for now. Um, so we'll, we'll be using the type later. Um, but so this makes our, our, our uh, writing the, or creating the functions very easy. So I'm gonna use the dropdown next to AutoSum, go to average, and instead of the range, and it's gone to the most adjacent numbers, which is just the number directly above it, I'm just gonna type in the word price. And you notice immediately it turns blue and it indicates this range of numbers that um, I've named as price so that I can just use that. And I'm gonna use the format painter again to format that. And there's my average price. The other option in terms of, of uh, instead of using the named range is simply to click and drag to select that range. You notice when I do select it, that up here, it just types in the word price because I've named that range. Um, it's very handy. It makes things easier when you name use names for, for ranges. Um, so now I want to um, talk about the date range and we're gonna do something, we're gonna um, talk about how long these cars have been on the lot so that we can advertise the ones that have been on the lot for the longest time. So I'm going to insert three rows at the top here. And there's a couple of ways I can do that. I can select the row and right click and say insert, and that will insert one row. Or I could select three rows and right click and say insert 
and that will insert three rows. Notice that as I um, scroll down, that the freeze top row has, is still working on the same row that I um, that I initially froze. So now it's it's freezing the top four rows, which is which is good because I I need to see this. Uh, the header row is helpful to keep there. So I'm going to uh, type it, go to A1 and type in today's date. Go two cells over. And then I'm going to put in a function that returns today's date. Um, and if you were here a couple of weeks ago, you, you may remember this. Um, I can uh, go to the more functions here under the dropdown. I can also click on the insert function button in the formula next to the formula bar here. I can go to in, I can go to not insert. I want to go to formulas and click the insert function, insert function button there, which is that FX, which you see next to the formula bar. And I can um, type in today and go, click go here to search. And there's the, the, the function for, for the today's date, which is today with open and close parentheses with nothing in them. So I can um, click OK there, and it just inserts it. And I'm going to click OK again. And there you see today's date. Now I'm going to, um, the today function is really handy. And if you're doing any kind of calculations for the age of something, it's particularly handy because it will recalculate the age of that item every time you open that spreadsheet. You won't have to update today's date because it's going to pull it from the computer you're on. So, um, but I'm going to change this to 4-5-2017. Oh, my num lock was off. Let's try that again. 4-5-2017. Just so that our, the date, uh, the date received here from 2017, um, We'll pretend it's 2017 and these cars came on the lot in the last couple of months. And so what I'm going to do, or what I want to do, let's first, let's bold these up here. I'm going to, I just, using the selection cursor to highlight those, go back to my home tab and click the bold button. That looks good. Now I want to add a column here, but I don't really want it to butt up against my, uh, we'll call this my dashboard. So I'm going to insert the column. And in order to do that, I'm going to select this column and right click and say insert. And then I'm going to start a new column and I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to call it days old. It's already, bolded because I bolded that whole row. I'm going to hit enter. Now um, I'm going to calculate how old this first car is based on the difference between the date received and today's date, which is up here in C1. Um, this is a uh, a variation on the lesson that we did uh, two weeks ago about the ice cream. And if you recall in that lesson, we were calculating the price of vanilla and chocolate uh, servings sold. And we had a, a list of the number of orders and then we had the, a price listed for the chocolate, and then we auto-filled the, the calculation down 
and we discovered that we had to use um, we had to use rel auto, uh, we needed to instead of res relative references we needed to use um, absolute references and this is uh, going to be a similar uh, lesson but with a different example so I think if you were there two weeks ago, if you want to go back and look at that lesson and then come back to this one, um, I think it will help you um, understand the relative versus absolute reference concept. So the, to calculate the days old, first I'll mention in Excel, each day is considered is, is a, has a value of one. So, um, if you add one day plus another day, it'll be two days. Um, so in other words, to calculate the days old, all we have to do is subtract uh, to, from today's date, the date received of this first, this forward focus, that's the first in our list. So we're gonna do a simple formula. What do we start with? Always start with the equals to tell Excel that we're gonna do a calculation. Then we're gonna to take today's date, which would be the larger number and subtract the date received and hit enter. And you see there's something wrong. And the re reason, the problem is that this column has been formatted as a date. So this is a number formatted as a date. We need to just format it as uh, general. And you see that changes to 17. I'm gonna just back do an undo real quick. Notice that the number 17 formatted as a date is January 17th, 1900. So, that's a clue that the time in Excel began in 1900. Um, if you're gonna calculate dates in Excel, um, the, the dates, dates and times that uh, Excel uses to calculate is based on a number assigned to each day based on January 1st, 1900 being uh, zero. Uh, so that's kind of a little um, trivia for you. Um, I'm going to redo, use the redo button. You know, you have your undo. I'm up here in the top left corner there. You have your undo button, and I'm going to redo it, which is uh, changing the format to general so that the number is just displayed as a simple number, the number 17. Okay. So now I'm going to autofill this down. And actually, here's another shortcut. If you have a long row of, of figures and you're trying to autofill something all the way down, you can just double click it. So that autofilled, and let's see how far it went, autofilled all the way down to the wherever there was data in the other cells. Now there's clearly a problem here. And this is the same thing we discovered. If you double click on this cell, you can see a visual representation of what's happening. We have C1 minus F5. We're subtracting the date received from today's date. We take today's date and subtract the date received. Now let's come down to this cell and see what's going on. It's saying, subtract C4 minus F8. So C4 is the word type and F8 is a date. So, and then you can see all the way down the, whoops, all the way down, it's subtracting, it's taking an, a word and subtracting a date, which is a number. And that's why it has this value error. Um, and in these figures, it's taking a blank cell and subtracting the date, and you get this 
weird number. Oh, and that just reformatted it or something. What did I do? Well, okay. Um, so the problem here, if you haven't guessed, uh, is that we need to tell Excel not to treat C1 as a relative reference. Um, can Excel account for leap years? Uh, yes, I believe it does. So it has it has the calendar is um, the calendar the series of days in the calend in in the actual calendar are programmed into Excel. So it does account for leap years. Um, so the the solution to this problem is to change C one from a relative reference to an absolute reference. And the trick is to add a dollar sign in front of the C and in front of the one. And then if I hit enter, that number doesn't change. It's still using that. But when I copy it with a double click here, you can see the other cells now are making uh, correct calculations subtracting the date received from today's date. So these are the correct, uh, the ages of the cars on the lot based on the date received, the days old, if you will. Um, so there was a question about the value button and I'm not sure I understand what that question was. I don't know when it when it was asked. Um, on the home tab, um, I still don't understand. Um, if we were to, re to re reconstruct this formula. I would type equals and click on today's date minus the day received. But I want to go back and change the days old to an absolute reference. So I'm going to actually tap on F4 as a shortcut to convert it from a relative reference to an absolute reference. That is the F4 button and I hit enter. And, and then uh, I can copy that down, which I've already done. So let's make that a smaller one with the double click there. Um, there'll be time after the class to, to discuss more if there's other questions I didn't uh, get to. Um, so now I'm going to do a simple if then function because I want to let's let's add another column. So I'm going to click in this column H and I'm going to use a different way to insert a column. I'm going to go to the insert button, uh, insert drop down, and do it insert sheet columns. There, you see that. So I just I selected the, a cell in the column that I want it, where I want to add. It's going to add it to the left. By the way, so I'm going to I I click to the right of where I want my column, and then click the insert insert sheet columns. And there it adds. Um, actually, I guess it added it to the right. Um, but I was on the blank cell and it duplicated it and, and it moved to the right. Okay, anyway. Um, so now I'm gonna create a column here that's gonna tell me whether or not to advertise this, these cars based on how long they've been on the lot. And I misstilled advertise a double click will put you back in the in the 
cell to, to edit it. I'm going to add the R there, resize it again. So this is going to be a simple if, if function that says if the car is older than 60 days, then we need to advertise it and get it sold, get it off the lot because it's been sitting around for too long. We need to move our inventory, right? So we can use the formulas bar and click on insert function. And if is here, one of the most common functions, I can click OK and it brings up my, well, let's do that again. I go to insert function, select if, you see it has the description here, it checks whether a condition is met, returns one value of true and another value of false. And it has the syntax for the function here. Inside the parentheses, there are three uh, values or three arguments or elements, if you will separated by commas. The first is the logical test. The second is the value if true. The third is the value if false. And if we click OK, then we get this handy dialog box where we can spell out our elements to insert into the function. And they just get automatically put inside the parentheses with separated by commas. So the logical test is the days old is greater than 60. So I'm gonna click on the days old for this row, this Ford Focus, that is uh, G5. And I'm gonna type in a greater than symbol. That's the one that points to the right, because I'm right-handed. And I'm gonna type in the number 60. And then the value, if true, if it is greater than 60, then I'm going to say yes, which is yes to advertise, because I want to advertise it. Or actually, I could just say, have the word advertise in quotes. And the value, if false, I'm just going to put two quotes to indicate that I'll just leave it blank. I could also just say the word no, uh, but it might be the others will stand out better if I leave it blank. Then they'll really jump out because it'll just say advertise. And then I click OK. And it looks like nothing has happened because the and if I click back on that cell, you can see the formula here in the formula bar. And it's saying if G5 is greater than 60, quote, advertise, otherwise blank. So in this case, uh, G5 is 17, it's not greater than 60, therefore. It's uh, our, our, our if statement is false, therefore it returned a blank line. So let's autofill this down. I'm gonna double click on the autofill handle and you can see that there's several that we need to advertise because they are more than 60 days old um, and the others are blank because they have been on the lot less than 60 days. And if you look through, you can see those that say advertise have all been here much longer than 60 days, 90 days, some of them or more. So <clears throat> that's our simple if function, which is a logical function. There's a whole range of logical functions that we can use in Excel. This is uh, perhaps the most simple um, and um, so 
Um, and there's some variations on the if function, which I want to also go into. Are there any other questions? Please post those in the chat. Um, so now, um, there's a couple of other, uh, we, we've done the sum function. Here's the sum function. And we've got the price or the average function here. Um, let's say, um, let's do a number inventory. Um, and we can resize this column again. I'm going to make this column narrower to kind of make it a little closer together to look good. And the, so the number inventory, we can, there's a simple um, formula or function called count, which will simply give us the number of numbers in a range. Um, and I think we, we looked at this, but uh, this time I'm gonna just type it out. Um, so I'm gonna type equals and I'm gonna type in the word count. Notice I didn't uh, capitalize it, but it's still bringing up all the different count functions. And I can, uh, I can double click on one of these and you see it, it just converted it to uppercase. Um, but even if it wasn't, it would still, it would still work. And then the count, uh, I'm going to, I can use the word price for my range, but I'm just gonna actually select it again to demonstrate. If you don't have named ranges, you just have to highlight them like that. But notice that it inserted the word price in again, because I've named that range. And then I click enter. And so the result of the count price is, uh, the number 46. So that tells us how many vehicles we have on our lot. If I were to delete one of these numbers, then you notice the number inventory immediately changed, as did the total inventory and the num average price. Um, if I click another one and delete it, you can watch the these numbers here as I delete this the next price down and you can see they immediately shift and update. Now we have 44. So I'm gonna click undo twice and you'll see these numbers go back to what they were. Now we have 46 and the average and inventory also updated as we put those numbers back in the total, uh, in the total count, in the total average and in the total inventory. So now, um, so there's some, there's some kind of fun uh, functions I'm gonna show. And this is where this lesson diverges from the ice cream parlor lesson. Um, you can combine, there's a, there's a couple of functions we'll use that combine the count and if, and also the, price or sum and if, and they're called count if and sum if. And um, let me see. So now I wanna know, we've got the total inventory for our car lot, but what if we wanna know how many cars, trucks, and SUVs we have? So we're gonna say number cars. Um, number trucks, 
uh, number SUVs. And um, let me see, I can't type today. Double click to edit that, edit it, hit enter, and it's saved. And um, so let's start with that. Um, so, um, we're going to go to the insert function again. And this time we're going to type in the word count and click go. And you notice there's a couple, there's uh, three functions that come up to the top of the list count, count a, and count if. I'm going to click on count if. And we can read the description here to get an understanding of what it does. And we can see the syntax right away too. It has two arguments in the parentheses, range and criteria, separated by a comma as usual. And what does it do? It counts the number of cells within a range that meet the given condition. So I'm gonna click OK. And then we have this handy pop-up dialog box. What is the range? And um, in this case, the range is the type. And we can just highlight these, or I can type in the word type. And, um, and then I can type my criteria. And in this case, the criteria is the word car in quotes. So I don't, if you remember, when you're dealing with text in formulas and functions, you always have to put the text in quotes uh, because Excel doesn't speak English, it only speaks math. And so uh, a text value in a formula or function always has to have quotes around it. And that's it. So now we have we have our range, which is the type column, which I've defined earlier. So it's as type, and it's this range from C5 down to C50. And um, and then the criteria is what am I working for? I'm looking for the word car because I want to know the number of cars. And I click OK. And it gives me a number for 18. Um, let me double check this. So my named range has remained consistent even though I added some columns at the top. So that's good to know and helpful of Excel to kind of maintain that. Uh, consistency. So now I'm going to, um, what I can do is copy this formula into the other cells um, and then just edit each one based on what I'm searching for. So you notice this is, this doesn't have any cell references. So when I copied the formula, it just copied it exactly as it was because it's not based on any um, uh, range. So this is actually informative. Um, when I named the type column, um, notice, let's go back up to the name manager. Notice the the cell references in the name for type. Notice you see the dollar signs there. Those uh, indicate that these, this is an absolute cell reference. It goes from C5 to C50 uh, with the dollar signs. So when I copied that down, 
it treated the range reference as an absolute reference. So it did not change them down. If they were defined as a relative reference, then it would have moved these down a row each as I moved it down the row. Does that make sense? Okay, so now I just need to edit these formulas instead of car. In this row, I want to type the word truck, hit enter, and you can see there's 17. And, um, and in this last one, I'm going to replace the word car with SUV and hit enter. And you see it's updated. They have different numbers for each of those. So now, um, Let's make this smaller. Now to the side here, I'm going to do um, a similar set of thing of uh, functions for the sum if. So here I have the number of vehicles in each category. In this next set of rows, I'm going to say the um, sum of cars, uh, or let's say we can say value of cars. Uh, let's see, I suggest we'll put um, let's see, I like value of cars. Value of cars value of trucks and value of SUVs. We'll auto format that and then we'll have, um, so for this one, this is a little bit uh, more complicated though, just to conceptualize it, we're gonna take we're going to look up, we're going to do the same sort of count if, except we're going to say search the type column for the word car. And if you find it, add up the price to that. Create, make a sum of all the cars that you find. So let's take a look. Uh, let's go back to the insert function. And this time we're going to type sum, click go, and there's sum if it's the second, third one down. And so we have sum if this time there's three criteria or three uh, arguments or elements in the parentheses. It says add the cells specified by a given condition or criteria. So the first two uh, elements in this function are actually the same as the count if, it's range and criteria. But now there's an additional element, which is the sum range. So I'm gonna click okay, and we'll get our handy dialog box. Um, the range that I'm gonna check for is the type range. So I'm going to type in the word type. These named ranges really make it convenient to do these functions. And then the criteria will be the same as it was for the first count if, which is the word car in quotes. Now the sum range is saying, so what are you gonna add up? We're gonna add up the price column. So I'm gonna type price. And you notice the, the named ranges don't require quotes. And that's because it's a, it's a collection of cells rather, so it's, um, 
that's somehow a mathematical concept for Excel rather than a, uh, you know, the word doesn't matter, but the fact that it's associated with a set of cells is the thing that matters for Excel. So then that's it. And I can click OK. And lo and behold, we have a number. If I double click, you can see the uh, color coding of what's happening in this formula function. Um, type is in blue. It shows the range for the type of vehicle. And then cars in red, that shows the range of the price of the vehicles. Um, so we just need to copy the format. I'm going to go back to the home tab. And I'm going to go ahead and just format all three of these cells with the format painter. And then I'm going to highlight those cells to paint that format onto those. And then I'll double click here to adjust the column width so that it fits. There's the value of all of our cars. Now we want to do the same thing with the value of trucks. I'm going to go ahead, instead of using the insert formula, I'm going to go up to more functions on this. If you didn't want to leave the home tab, you can use the drop down next to auto sum and go to more functions. And you get that same uh, collection there. So I'm going to. We're doing some if, I'm gonna click okay. Notice I didn't have to search for it because it just puts the most recent ones that I've used here. You can see these are the, all the, the last five functions that we use, some if, count if, if, today, and some, and average. That's six actually. So we've used six functions today. I click okay and my range, is type, my criteria in this case is truck in quotes. And my sum range is the word price. And I click OK. And there's my sum of all the trucks on the lot. Um, let's see, somebody wanted the, the... Yeah, somebody wanted the link uh, to download, send the download link again. Okay, yep. Make sure I get the right one. The class materials link. Okay, there it is again. Now for this third one, I'm going to just type it out. I'm going to type equals um, some if. I'm just going to type it through with, I'll leave it in lowercase, just to make sure, see if it, if it matters. My range is uh, the type column. So I just type the word type. Notice it turns blue as soon as I finish typing it and highlights those, so that named range. So that's an indicator that I'm on the right track, comma, quote, SUV, end quote, comma, price. Notice, um, close parentheses. Notice, before I close the parentheses, notice it shows the sum if uh, arguments that it requires down below here. So there's the range where I'm testing, then the criteria that I'm using to test. So I'm testing the type. I'm looking for SUVs. And then I want to add the sum range is what I want adding, which is the price. So I'm going to hit close quote and enter. And there's each of those is has the same structure. And that gives us our uh, value of the different vehicles. Let's just do a quick set auto sum to um, compare that with our total inventory and make sure that we didn't miss anything. I'm going to click auto sum. Auto sum immediately 
looks for adjacent number values and it finds those three values in the column above the auto sum formula function and I hit enter. We have 1,276,566, which matches our total inventory. So it looks like we didn't miss anything. So that's our uh, dashboard uh, for the, so if you were here last week, you know that pivot tables are an even shorter cut to pulling numbers like this out of, um, of a spreadsheet like this. Um, but these functions are useful outside of, uh, could be useful in other contexts as well. Um, so, and it, it's, um, it's a it's some really good examples of the power of the of functions and um, just getting Excel to do what you want. Um, <clears throat> so we have um, about eighteen minutes left. So um, let's see. We talked about named ranges. And this, I want to look at the VLOOKUP function, which is one that gets used a lot in the business world. If you're wanting to learn Excel to become more um, hireable, this might be a function that you get asked to do in the workplace. Um, so the VLOOKUP has four elements and the best way for me to explain this is going to be through um, uh, let me see let's see I'm going to open I downloaded it. It's already, it's a VLOOKUP practice file in the class materials. And I already downloaded it. So I'm going to go to the browse and there it is VLOOKUP practice in the downloads folder. Um, click open. And here it is. I'm going to click enable editing. And then I'm going to bring it to the side, close this other window, and let's redo this. So I got my split screen. So you can see the, uh, I'm gonna zoom in, make this a little bigger. Um, here's our definition of, of uh, Excel's definition of VLOOKUP. And let me see, I'm going to delete that. So we can um, compose the, the function here. Um, so the concept of VLOOKUP is something that you do all the time when you are go to a Starbucks for instance. And when you look at the price board, you're looking for, you're, you're, you're looking vertically uh, down a list to find the item that you want. Where's the cafe mocha? That's what I want. You find it on the list and you say, I want a grande. So then you go across to the grande column and you find the value that you want. So, oh, okay, the cafe, the Grande Cafe Mocha is three ninety five. That, in short, is a ver is a VLOOKUP, is what the VLOOKUP function does in Excel. And um, this is uh, seemingly simple. Um, well, it is simple, 
but it, it has some really um, powerful uses in, in, um, in and I'm, I'm hope to have time to show you that. But so let's function, let's create a simple uh, VLOOKUP and this is, um, we're gonna, use it so you can type in whatever you want in this cell and it'll tell you the price here um, of a grande. So let's go to the, uh, um, now my, my uh, go to the formulas, tab on the, bro on the insert function and then we're going to um, type in the lookup click go the lookup and here's the same thing we have over here um, it says looks for a value in the leftmost column of a table and then returns a value in the same row from a column you specify by default, the table must be sorted in ascending order. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And here's sort of a translation. This image is from um, a guy named John, I forgot his name, last name, but he's, he's on, uh, YouTube, he does Excel tutorials. Um, it's called Excel Campus. And they're, they're very good. I stole some of this from, from him. Um, so the, the blue, the color coding here tells you what, what, they, what they mean. So the lookup value is the value you're looking for. The table array is the range to look in. And then the purple column index number tells you which column number uh, to find the value you're looking for, the column number of the value to return. Um, so let's go through this step-by-step step here. So we have the, the lookup value is, in this case, we're gonna just use what's typed here in A15. So I'm gonna just click on A15. Though if I, or I could type out quote Cafe Mocha if I wanted to write in the formula. The table array is where it's uh, the range to look in. And that is um, this table here that has all the prices. You notice I don't include the column headers because the column, I'm not gonna search in the column headers. I'm searching everything below the column headers. So I, I highlight that and, um, and then I go to the column index number and that is the number column number of the value to return. In this case, I'm looking for the cost of a grande. So let me come back here. I've got my in the in the range that I selected, which they call an array. I need to tell them which column I want to return. Column one is always going to be the column you're searching. The VLOOKUP is searching for the value in column one. So the column index number here is never going to be one. It's going to be either two or more. And in this case, the column number I'm looking for is one, two, three. It's going to be three. To get grand grande, I'm going to put in the number three here. And then the last one is the most confusing, and that's whether it is an approximate or exact match. And the actual question that it, you're answering in that lookup is, are you finding the closest, <clears throat> are you 
looking for an approximate match or not. And um, so this, this is where it gets confusing. If you, um, most of the time you're gonna wanna say false because you want an exact match. So the, it's a question, the answer to the question, are you looking for an approximate match? The answer is false. No, I want an exact match. And then I click OK. Notice it returns the value of uh, 395, which is the correct price for a Grande Cafe Mocha. And uh, if we double click here, or let's see if we, yeah, double click there, you can see the, the range so that the search values in blue here, that's the lookup value. Then uh, the table array starts with uh, A4 and goes down to D11. So that's, you see, it goes A4 to D11. And it's doing a weird thing, sort of. Um, it says A4 colon A4, then a colon to D4. Um, but it's, you know, uh, referring to that range. That's what we selected. And then the third one is the column index, which is three, because uh, if we're looking in column A, we want to go over two to find the price for the grande. And then we want an exact match, so it says false. So I know this can be kind of overwhelming, um, especially the approximate or exact match, true or false. But the question that's actually being asked there is whether it's an approximate match or not. And to search for an exact match, you just say false every time. Now, um, the case where you need to do an approximate match would be if you're looking in a series of numbers that are in order, so that if, um, <coughs> so it would be, so it would return a number, uh, it would return the closest number to the one that you're searching. If it didn't appear exactly, you could at least, it would, it would give you the one that it's between or the one that it's nearest to. So that's where um, you would use the um, approximate match. So, Let's uh, see, we have, we don't really have time, um, but I'm just gonna show you um, without getting too in depth, I'm gonna just show you how this could work in a, in a real life example. So here, um, and this, this, uh, there's, a, there's an example of some, some common errors that occur. Um, and then there's this series of relationships. And we have um, using VLOOKUP to create relationships between tables. Um, let's see. So, we have uh, uh, some, we have order, customer ID, salesperson, product name, revenue, product category, and representatives region. And then in the next spreadsheet here, we have lookup tables. And this is where the VLOOKUP comes in. So we have product name and category here in this table. In the next table, the green one here, we have a salesperson with some other data, including the region. 
And then for the customer ID, there's a there's a an ID number and a customer name. So I'll just show you the one example. We want to create a VLOOKUP to get the, grab the product category from these lookup tables, from the lookup table here, and insert it into this spreadsheet in this column. So I'm going to type out VLOOKUP. As I start to type it, I can hit if when it pops up under here like this. I could double click it, but I can also use the tab button, which is really handy. So I don't have to move from the keyboard. I start typing, it pops up there. I type tab and it pops in there like that and it, and it comes right in. So the, my lookup value is gonna be the product name. I'm gonna use the product name to look up the product category in the lookup tables. Then I type a comma. And then I'm going to click over to my other table and select my product name and category table, not including the column headers. And then you see my formulas here in the formula bar. Then I'm going to type a comma. And then um, the next is the um, Uh, what is it called? The uh, I look up column index number. Let's uh, come back here. I'm going to type a uh, whoops. Let me back up. Okay. And my split screen, I can keep keep that up. Um, let's start again. Equals lookup, start to type, hit tab, click on the product name, because I'm going to try to look up the product category, comma, click on lookup tables, highlight the range where I'm looking up for the category, type a comma. Now the column index number is going to be two because it's the second column in the ones in the selection that I selected from. And I type comma and then I type false to say I want an exact match and enter. And it's telling me I entered too many. Uh, one, two, three, four. No, it should be okay. You enter too many arguments for this function. Look up D4, column lookup tables. Oh, you know, one thing that I forgot to do was to make this an absolute reference. And then Oh, I don't know why it's doing that. Let's, uh, oh, because I typed lookup. I didn't put the V lookup. Okay, now let's try it. Okay, now it's working. So it was a typo. Look at that. All right, now I'm going to autofill, and this should work. Now you can see my, uh, I've, successfully retrieved the product category for each product name. Now you notice there's uh, an error here. And the reason is that there was no name in the product name category. So there's ways to deal with that. But um, if I double click on one of these, you can see it's using the word dried plums to look up in the lookup table here under dried plums, it's a dried fruits and nuts. And that's the value that it returned. So it's simply looking up dried plums in this other table. It's saying like, go, go look up this phone number in the phone book. That's basically what VLOOKUP does is, is look up numbers in phone books. So, um, 
we're out of time, going a little bit over. Let me um, expand my uh, PowerPoint here. So I've got the list of some common functions in this PowerPoint. Um, there's the today function, which we used. There's the count function, which we also used. Um, logical functions, the if function, the sum if, and I didn't include the count if, but we did the count if works uh, even sim more simply than the sum if. And there's some uh, shortcuts. The F4 is really handy for the absolute versus toggle, F for absolute versus relative toggle. And some other resources, there's some links to materials in our collection. And um, the GCF Learn Free tutorials there are on uh, lessons 13 through 16. Um, and here's a link to the John Acampora at Excel Campus. Hello there and welcome. And he has some really good ones. Um, the, the, especially he, his, his videos are very thorough. Um, and I used, uh, you saw, uh, I used some of his concepts for VLOOKUP and I used, uh, I showed you some of his stuff from the pivot tables last week. Um, another one for, for uh, well done short videos is the Layla Garani is also on YouTube. There's a link to her. And um, lastly, here is the link again that I put in the chat earlier to the, to the, um, Library's YouTube channel, you can see the, the most recent uploads for the, the last three, the last four Excel classes. And this class will also be uploaded there. And, um, and lastly, if you want to uh, get further help or have questions, Excel problems you want some help with, you can schedule a book a librarian with me, uh, give us a call. Uh, we schedule an hour at a time, and I can help you uh, review any of the concepts we talked about or look at any other problems you're having with Excel. So thanks for attending. Please take a moment to fill out the survey that Ken posted in the chat. Uh, let us know if there's other classes you want to see and what you thought of this class. So. Um, Thanks for attending and uh, I can stick around for a bit for further questions. Um, and uh, hope to see you at the library sometime.